This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by PillPack, a full service pharmacy that combines personalized service, convenient packaging, and modern technology to make your life easier. Visit pillpack.com slash twit to save $20 on vitamins and OTCs when you transfer your prescriptions. And by Drobo, a family of safe and expandable yet simple to use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. Visit drobo.com slash twit and use the code twit100 to save $100 off a Drobo Mini, Drobo 4 Bay, or Drobo 5M. Today on Know How. It's a drone that flies you. Electric motorbikes. Electric vehicles at CES 2016. An electric car for the rest of us. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Palos here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next 45 minutes or so, we're told, we'll bring you some of the projects that we've been geeking out to so you can bring them home and geek out on your own. We do what we want. We do. And what we want to do is a 45-minute show or less. I yes, <laughs> and we want to do it on electric vehicles. Yes, because I, for one, welcome our electric overlords. Uh, we've had this for a while. This has probably been one of the Woo! least fatal electric vehicles we've had in the studio for a while. <laughs> uh, very close to being fatal. But, yeah, this is an uh, electric scooter that we had for Before You Buy that we, I discovered was kind of stowed away still. Uh, this is the e 2 Wow. So again, the, the naming conventions for a lot of electric vehicles is not... Wow. That's probably a Shenzhen type thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was really dangerous because it's front wheel drive. And also, I remember on that one, uh, you don't get a smooth pickup of the motor. It's sort of like off and no, it's 50 off miles an hour. And then it, it does have regenerative braking, which cool, regenerative braking, but uh, it's very just like wants to <laughs> throw you over the handlebars. So. Which is great. That's, you know, for safety. Um, for safety. So if you like living life on the edge, electrically. But I mean, when you consider that we've also had an electric skateboard that weighed like 70 pounds and wanted to kill you immediately, this is probably <laughs> one of the safer devices we've See, had. See, uh, Padre, the way I look at it, we are living in a very special time where finally the, uh, the battery technology is getting to the point where we can have these these <laughs> modes of transportation, but we have not yet mastered a lot of them. So we are going to, there's going to be a lot of fatalities before we actually get to uh, a more more elegant design for some of these. Because have you seen the um, the little Segway guys? I forget what they're yes, called. Yes, the Ninebots. That, that, I, I rode one at CES. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. Not, it, it was not bad. I mean, I, I got, within about 30 seconds, I, I uh -huh. remembered how to ride them. Yeah. Well, what's the even smaller Segway one that ignites on fire? I oh, no, no. It. Those are the hoverboards. The hoverboards. I am not jumping on one of those. Yeah. That, no, that's just a really so, good way to burn your house down. We're still learning. We're still learning. <laughs> uh, speaking of still learning and things that might kill you, did mm -hmm. you know at CES... Um, the electric vehicle that probably got the most attention was also the one that was the most impractical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's usually how it is, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> it was the, the yeah. Ehang 184. Now, uh, I don't know okay. if you, you saw this in the news coverage. We definitely covered it on our CES There's a special. lot of stuff from CES. There's a lot of stuff from CES, but it's a octocopter, an mm -hmm. X8 octocopter, that just happens to carry people. <laughs> yeah, nothing could go wrong with that. Nothing could go wrong at all. You know what? I, I could talk about it. Instead, I'm just going to ask Alex to go ahead and push that button. Hey, know it alls. What's better than a drone? How about a drone that you can ride in? Now, we have seen contraptions put together the last couple of months. Everything from that home built ridiculous lawn chair with what was it 48 motors but this is something more refined this is actually an engineered solution called the e hong 184 it's an octocopter so it's eight props eight motors on four arms that can be swiveled up this will actually fit inside of a parking space it's a five foot square now the interesting thing about this is it's not a traditional craft in that you don't have any controls you sit down your, your destination has been programmed in you pitch you push two buttons one is for power and one is for flight. Now, when you hit the flight button, it will autom automatically take off, go to the destination, and then land. It does all the collision avoidance and all the emergency features are built into the logic itself. Oh, they say that this will get you about two miles in 23 minutes of battery life. 
Uh, of course, there are a lot of regulatory hurdles. Who knows if this is actually even going to see the light of day as an actual product. But I got to say, this has really brought a lot of attention to the engineering skills of, of Ehang. Even if this does not make it to the showroom, I think it's definitely going to be in the dreams of drone enthusiasts everywhere. <laughs> Vertical takeoff and landing, top speed uh -huh. of 62 miles an hour. Like I said, about two mile range, goes yeah. up to 11,000 feet, weighs 440 pounds. They say it's going to sell for about 70 grand. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. And then where are you going to fly it? I have no idea because, yeah. it, I mean, they say that, well, they're, they're working with the FAA. Ah, like, well, if yes. the FAA doesn't want me flying my <laughs> FPV quadcopter, they're probably <laughs> right. not going to let you fly a, a person in a drone. So you think they're going to make them register it? <laughs> 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 I mean, the only place that you probably would be able to use it is, um, well, First, you're going to have to be really rich to buy one, but yeah. I mean, if you have a private island, then I guess no problem, right? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, th here's the thing. Um, it's cool tech, and yeah, we've seen it done in sort of the hobbyist way, but mm -hmm. when, you, when you break down the science here, multi-rotors are one of the least efficient ways to fly. We <laughs> like them because they're incredibly agile. Yes. But trying to support an object on its on just thrust alone has always been very inefficient. And so we're, we're dealing with much smaller scales. Much smaller scale. I mean, unless there's a massive increase in battery technology, you're not going to be able to keep this thing up in the air. And, and the other people were saying, well, why didn't you just put a gas engine? The weight of the gas engine would actually take <laughs> up all the cargo room. As it is, you could only fly in this if you, weigh, if you and all the things you bring on the craft weigh less than 260 pounds. Right, right. And, you know, there's the whole exploding into flames exploding and things into flames. like that. Remember, there are no flight controls. so right. It's all autonomous. It's all okay. autonomous. If it were to actually do anything. Yeah, exactly. Like no, no, but, I mean, they, they showed us videos. They actually did test this thing. And they, they've, they've done the engineering. It does work. But mm -hmm. uh, I just don't see San Francisco with, you know, 400 of these things taking two-mile <laughs> jumps. <laughs> uh, uh, now, if they could do 40 miles so I could get to the Twit Brick House but between charges, right. I might like try that. Uh, now, what if somebody drove you on the flatbed of a truck with one of those until you got to the two-mile <laughs> two range and then you flew the rest out of the battery way? Packs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, no. yeah, the, the, the best part would be, mm -hmm. like, uh, you're right at the end of, edge of the range, but you have a headwind. So it's like, well, we're not going to quite make it. We're going to land in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> Mm. Um, yeah, it's pretty scary when my uh, quadcopter loses an, a motor, and I'm not even in the craft, so yeah, exactly. I don't think I want to exactly. deal with that. Uh, well, that's the other thing. So people say, "Oh, it's 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 an octocopter, so it has it has a little bit of fault, you know, redundancy." Mm. Not so much because that much weight. That weight limit is <laughs> predicated on having all eight props moving. So if yeah. you lose one, yeah, you won't fall out of the sky but you've suddenly lost half of your cargo carrying capacity. So <laughs> unless you weigh 130 pounds wet, you, you won't be able to maintain your altitude. Uh, yeah, and it's not the speed that kills you, Padre. It's the <laughs> sudden stop when you hit the ground. So. It's not the speed that kills you. It's you <laughs> falling out of the compartment and getting cut up by the blades <laughs> as you fall past them. It is it's pretty much the perfect killing machine <laughs> because as much as... as unsafe as an airplane or as safe as an airplane can be at least the the spinning part is in front of you it's not surrounding you, you know? <laughs> it's like uh, yeah helicopter the death is above me yeah here it's like no it's it's everywhere <sighs> it's everywhere mm. and, and that's you know that's the other thing it, it, a helicopter is far more efficient yes. a, a plane is far more efficient so while I, I love innovation and I mm -hmm, think this is really mm -hmm. cool technology I just don't see it being anything other than a joy ride craft and if it's gonna be a joy ride craft I want control. I'm not going to spend that much yeah. on a joyride. Like if it's going to be that much for a joyride craft, it's going to be like a Audi R8 or something like that. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, and actually, retired guy is saying, you know, in a helicopter, you can you can auto rotate. Uh, there's no auto rotation on a quadcopter. There is, there is. <laughs> you auto rotate into the ground. Oh, I can see why it was very popular. Yeah. At the, and yeah. it, you know, we've been promised our flying cars for a long time, so people want to see that. Uh, it is a flying car. So you have. Oh, and by the, one of the cool parts of this is those arms actually fold up, so it will fit into a traditional parking space, like a compact <laughs> parking space. I mean, Wait, so you're going to take it to the grocery store, and then when you come back out, you realize that it's the groceries you have are too heavy to go into it? So. Well, I can only take an apple, so <laughs> I'll come back for the rest of that stuff in like 15 trips. Uh, right. uh, let's go ahead and move away from things that are, again, I, I don't want to 
crap on anyone's technology, although I think we just did. It's always cool to see automation mm -hmm. and, and technology come together in the perfect storm of coolness. But Brian, you actually got to take a look at an electric vehicle that was a bit more practical. Yes, a bit more practical, a little bit <laughs> less um, dangerous. You know, there's not a lot of blades spinning around on it. Uh, I recently got to go down to Brisbane, uh, just south of San Francisco, where they are making an elect electric bicycle. I want to say it's a motorbike. So okay. it's not quite a motorcycle, electric motorcycle, and it's not quite an electric bicycle. It's kind of a hybrid in between. So, okay, what's wh how do you define each of that? What, what makes an electric bike? What makes an electric motorcycle? And then what does it mean to fall in between? So, what would make an electric motorcycle would be something like the Zero DS that we reviewed right. on Before You Buy. That's where like three years ago. Yeah. That was, yeah, like three years ago where um, it was about $15,000, mm -hmm. had a huge battery, um, but you had pegs. You know, everything about it was a motorcycle. You could ride it on the street. You had to register it. You, had, you have to have a license to ride it. Um, an electric bicycle would be something a lot lighter, smaller size, you don't have to register it, top speed of 20 miles per hour, um, because I think once you do over that, you have to have it registered and stuff. Ah, got it. And so what Bolt Motorbikes has done is they've built an electric motorbike that has pedals. So it has the feel of a bicycle, but the dynamics of, like it has a throttle and a disc front brake and motorcycle tires, and it all, the whole package weighs about 140 pounds. Well, I don't get it. Why, why make that hybrid? Why not just go with one or the other? So this is basically like the killer errand, errand runner machine for like a urban environment. So if you want to go up hills, it's powerful enough to go up hills, but it's easy enough to ride if you've ever ridden a bi bicycle, you could hop on it. And it, um, the range is about I think between 35 to 20 miles per hour, or 20 miles, depending on how you ride it. And it has bicycle pedals on it, so you can pedal it like a bike. And that also allows it to not be, you have to register it or have a license for it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I, I think actually you, you've, you've got some B-roll, so we can take I a do. look at what it actually looks like. And, and then maybe you can explain what, what it is that we're seeing. Okay. So if you uh, roll the B-roll, we, me and Kara, our, uh, one of our engineers, went down to check out where they manufacture these. Oh, it looks it was, like an old Indian. Well, so it's based off something called, a, I think it's called a pug or something. A it's pug? A pug? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a moped. It's basically a okay. moped. Um, so we went down to Brisbane where they're constructing these, and Bolt was actually an Indiegogo that they got funded through that. And it's really cool to see the production process of everything. But so these are all handcrafted? These are all handcrafted. Um, the, Nathan, the owner and creator of the company, actually has his PhD in um, mechanical engineering, and he had started at working at zero, and then he had helped them uh, increase their production. So they're not cranking out bikes every day, but they're getting to the point where they can build two, two or three bikes in a day or two. Um, and they have this kind of cafe racer retro style to them. Um, and that is really conducive Ooh. for keeping it light. I think one of my favorite things about riding it. It looks fun. It was super fun. Um, so the electric motor is about the same. Uh, I would put it, if you were going to compare it to like a gas bike, it would be somewhere around 100 cc's. Really? Uh, yeah. That's so. Well. When you Wait, what's the range? Like how far can you get if you were riding like you're riding right now? So if you're riding like this, I would say probably 20, mi 20 25 miles. That's not bad. Um, yeah. And this thing powers up hills and stuff like that. It does um, it do regen break braking? It does. So the front, you have a disc brake, which is really nice. Um, it worked really well. Uh, and then the rear is actually the regen braking, which is the left lever on there. And so when you squeeze that, um, it starts the regenerative process. And the harder you squeeze it, the more it'll it'll start braking. And it's a lot, lot smoother than some of the other uh, regenerative braking so systems. So it doesn't want to throw you over the handlebars. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's very subtle and controllable. Like, how, how much does this thing weigh? I mean, I, I'm thinking, is this something like I could put into the back of my car? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, they were picking them up. I mean, it's 140 pounds, so it's still pretty heavy. But like, maybe, maybe it could be a lot heavy. That, I'm gathering most of that is the battery. 
battery. Right. And you can, so one of the cool features they have is that the, the battery system is modular, and what you do um, oh, yeah. is you flip a tab and you pull back a lever and it detaches the batteries from the hookup, and then you can basically pull them out like a little briefcase, and each battery weighs about oh, 15 pounds. That's cool. So, and I, I was thinking that it was going to be kind of top heavy because the batteries are basically where a gas tank would be. And there's not the only thing below it is basically the the electric motor, but it wasn't top heavy at all. And I think because it's so light, it just it steers like a bicycle. But you've got the throttle like a motorcycle, and so it's very like controllable. Do, um, does it have that typical that electric vehicle low end torque where it just like wants to snap your spine if you just no take it? no it doesn't. it doesn't. I mean, I, it, what they've done is they've um, they programmed it so you just get like a linear you know uh, torque okay. yeah. band off of the um, off the line. That's a safety thing, really. I mean, you'll <coughs> it's definitely a safety if thing. If you take a typical electric motor that can power something like this, a 100cc equivalent, you would spin the back tire if you just, right. if you just want throttle up. Well, and uh, so Nathan pointed out, he said, you know, you can do a wheelie on it, actually. You <laughs> hold in the regenerative braking lever, and then you just floor it. Uh, considering I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, I couldn't do that. Uh, that's Nathan, the guy, um, the owner of the company. See, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want that coming over the top of me. <laughs> that's called a stoppy, and no, uh, no. he not only is he like really passionate about bikes, but he's super knowledgeable. So uh, we had a lot of fun going down there. Um, I'm not gonna say it's per without problem because it is. It's five thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay, that's a lot, but it's that's actually not. Right, bad. you have to think in the realm of right. like electric vehicles. That's actually not that bad, considering like a full electric motorcycle is going to cost you over twelve grand. Right. Uh, you may be able to find an electric bicycle for a little bit less than that, but um, they've really put a lot of forethought into how they w manage the batteries, and you can lock it up like you would a normal bike. Like, right. um, and what else was there about it? That like, oh, the <laughs> it was kind of a neat feature to unlock the bike. One of the co-founders' father was actually the guy who invented the Bop-It. And <laughs> so when you, the uh, start on pre process is you like, you turn on the bike and then to unlock it, you can customize what you do to- Turn it, it, pull it, bop so it. You turn the throttle, you tap yeah. the brake, you press the button and then it'll come on. Or you can unlock it with your phone, so. That's a little Mad Max. Yeah, oh, left, left, right, right, left, right, turn. Twist. Yeah, exactly. Pop it, twist it, <laughs> pull it. Uh, so they came on the screensavers. If you want to find out some more information or watch that segment that we did with Leo, but I think he's he was convinced to maybe get one for the studio, which I would be up for. Well, I mean, consider this. That's the same price as a loaded Segway. Yes. And you'll get further and faster on this than you will on a Segway. Right, and that's why I think this is something for if you live in an urban City, like city, basically San Francisco. If you're somewhere like San Francisco where there's hills and mm. you know there's not a lot of, not everybody has a garage. Right. Uh, the best way to get around the city is on a bicycle, and this kind of treads the line where you can like go up hills on it. You can don't have to register it, um, and like any other electric vehicle, the initial cost is all the battery stuff. Right. Uh, but you don't. The only things you'll ever have to do is clean the chain, you know, change the brake pads. There's no oil, there's no like engine tuning or anything like that. It's, it's always interesting whenever a technology like this comes out, there's, there's that moment of, okay, this is cool, this would be fun, and then the questions of, but what if I did this? And what if mm -hmm. I was in this situation? And what if I, this Is happened? it practical for me? Is it practical? And, and I yeah. think you know, for me, the Segway is really like that. I like riding the Segway. Mm -hmm. I, it's a fun vehicle to, to, to drive. It's, it's actually very useful. I like that little nine bot I found at CES because I like the robot mode. Mm -hmm. But then the question is, is that where I'm going to spend $1,000? Right. And like, will well, it end go, up sitting in my garage? garage? <laughs> yeah. So if you were someone who had a choice between a Segway and this, like, what would you do? I'd probably go with this. That's what my choice was, too. Yeah. And you can have a passenger on it, too. Well, so. I mean, I think I am a passenger. <laughs> so maybe not me. You could have a passenger. Yeah. I think I would side seat myself. Well, and, you know, I could get, like, a little sidecar or something for, for my dog. <laughs> and he can ride around with me. Actually, you wouldn't need it. You just put him in a backpack, the little corgi backpack. Yeah. Like, aerodynamic. <laughs> So uh, that that's the most um, you know thing I've been excited about most recently with the electric stuff. I, I, I'm wondering if if the the real advancements in EV they're not going to come from the big blockbustery type releases, but from 
things like this? Because I, I could see GM, Ford, Volvo, whatever, saying, well, we've got the next electric vehicle that people are going to be really, really excited by. But mm -hmm. there is a growing group of companies that are manufacturing EVs for specific use cases. They will not take you from city to city. Yeah. They, you, know, you cannot use it as your commuter vehicle from San Francisco to Petaluma. But it is so much more practical if you, say, live in San Francisco or you exactly. live in San Jose or Dallas or Chicago because you can take it into your apartment because it will take you to work and back on a single charge mm -hmm. uh, because it's not so expensive that you're always going to be worried about it getting lost or destroyed. Exactly. Uh, and mm, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's interesting times. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think uh, for even just me living in Petaluma, I'm about 10 minutes away from the studio. It would be fine for me if I had... I would have to have two sets of batteries, I think, where right. I one would... One here, one there. Right. So I would charge them at home, ride over to the studio, plug those in, and then before heading home, I put like the studio ver um, ones I have in the bike and then go home. Well, we did see there is one manufacturer at, um, at CES that Dickie D interviewed. I think the scooter uh, the thing, right? The Gogoro. Gogoro, right? The sc it's a scooter. Right. And they're like developing a battery network. That exactly. I think of it as sort of the, um, the, the bike sharing. Right. program but instead of bike sharing it's battery sharing mm -hmm. so you pull your battery out you plug it in you have a subscription and you swap in the new one right uh, that I mean that would be kind of cool I, yeah. I if I lived if I still lived in DC and they offered that that's something I would definitely subscribe to right so I think uh, we're getting there we need to see things to really like make electric vehicles break out is like quick charging right and expense those are the two biggest yeah. hurdles right now for those things yeah. and once you start giving me a vehicle that performs like I need it to, mm -hmm. that is as durable and consistent as I expect from the vehicles I drive right now, yeah. and doesn't cost a premium, a crazy premium more, then then I'll talk. Right. And I think they said it's 27 cents to charge the batteries. That's how much yeah, it costs yeah. for electricity. That's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, folks, we're going to bring you more. We're actually going to be taking a walk over to CES. We've been talking a little bit about what I saw over there. I want to show you some of the most interesting Alternative. Uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Dale Poco was saying artisanal EV manufacturers. <laughs> yes, we've got we've got some artisanal EV product yes, they are. that we want to show you. This is our EV episode of Know How, and uh, we're not going to just give you what the, the big manufacturers are, are showing you. We're going to show you what the little guys have created. But before we do that, mm -hmm. hey Brian, you, you know what I really like? Uh, I'm going to say taking pills, but <laughs> taking vitamins. Well, I was yeah. going to say I really like when we welcome a new Oh, a new sponsor. Advertiser, that too. A new okay. sponsor okay. to the show. And it, it's this. It's, it's Pill Pack. Now, let, let me ask you. If, if you are elderly, I know you're not, but I'm up there. You know, I'm, I'm running well, on five decades here. Hey, so. don't prejudge because I'm type 1 diabetic and I do need, like, certain vitamins that I probably should, should be taking more regularly. Right, right. And, and you know... I. I and my parents, we both have those pill minder boxes because you you need to yeah, make sure you take what Sunday, you, Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah, yeah. which is always fun to refill, and then sometimes you forget if you've actually done this particular <laughs> pill pack or the next pill minder or whatever it is. Don't do that anymore. Instead, instead of ordering really expensive uh, uh, vitamin supplements and, and prescription drugs from your local pharmacy or, your, or even online, what if I told you that you could get everything that you need for a particular day in one easy to open pack? I would enjoy that. And you know what that company might be called? PillPack? PillPack, yeah. That's pretty simple. That. Exactly. <laughs> oh, PillPack is, a, is a, a vendor that will sort all of your medications and vitamins in easy-to-tear pa packets, labeled with the date and the time for each dose. That means you no longer need to use that antiquated Monday to Sunday pillbox. Now, they do this by using robots. I love robots, Brian. Robots and digital imaging technology, along with an actual pharmacist that makes sure that you get the accuracy that you need in every pill pack. Uh, pharmacists are available 24-7 from the privacy of your own home, so you no longer need to have those awkward pharmacy encounters when you come up to the desk and you kind of have to describe what you need and they're, they're trying to figure out what it is that you're talking about compared to your prescription. No, don't, don't do that. Instead, just have the online pharmacist, have the online robots take care of your needs and get you that packet of goodness in the mail. Oh, it's compatible with most major insurance plans, including most forms of Medicare Part D. When you sign up for the pill packs, they make sure that your insurance is compatible before they transfer any of your medica medications over. Believe it or not, that is huge. There, I have heard horror stories of, of people who transfer over their prescriptions to find out that it's not covered under their current insurance, and then they're stuck with a bill. No, that's not what PillPack is going to do. PillPack is going to make sure that your, your transfer is as easy and as gentle as possible. 
Now, switching is easy. You sign up on their secure site, and they take care of everything else for you. It's recognized by Time Magazine as a top 25 invention. Jill Duffy gave it a great review in PC Magazine. There's also a pill pack medication reminder app for the iPhone and the Apple Watch. So if you're one of these people who is always missing your dosages, well, now you can get help for the, a little digital technology. A pill pack is med medication simplified. You won't believe how much easier and more convenient it is until you've tried it. And so we want you to try it. Go to pillpack.com slash twit. That's pillpack.com slash twit to sign up now. Their site is beautiful and it only takes five minutes to sign up. When you use our link and transfer your prescriptions to Pillpack, you get a credit for $20 worth of vitamins and OTCs. That's pillpack.com slash twit. Pillpack.com slash twit. And we thank Pillpack for their support of know-how. And, and you're taking all my pills. Uh, well, you know, I was actually admiring them. They're really well packaged and know, it right? says when you're supposed to take them. I, I really, I, that's is so why cool. I that's, it's, it's, just, you tear off the next one. Yeah. Hmm. It literally is a pack of pills. I, there's actually a few vitamins in here I should probably take. No, <laughs> those are mine. Oh, fine. Stay, stay away. Mm. Thanks, Bill Pack. Now, folks, we promised you that we were going to show you uh, a little bit of something something EV from CES and that's exactly what we're gonna do now here's a cut down of some of the vendors that I found when I uh, visited the greatest show on earth one of my absolute favorite parts of CES is the vehicles. That's why here on day two, we start outside with Vish, the CEO of Gen Z. Vish, this is your dream for the ideal city vehicle. Tell me about the Gen Z. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the Gen Z 2.0. Gen Z stands for Generation Zero Emissions. And so we, we wanted to create a vehicle which gets from point A to point B in mega cities. You know, you got crowded cities, people are looking for shared transportation. People do not want to be facing the hassles of a mega city where parking is a problem, traffic is a problem. So something like this where you, you're you not carrying three empty seats with you. You you want to get from point A to point B. you got some, uh, a vehicle where you can drive and you can carry your stuff with you. This vehicle is the first in, uh, first in the world. It's the first connected electric mo uh, scooter. Right, it's built on a scooter form factor, but it is much more than a scooter. As I said, it's it's it allows you to drive as well as carry your stuff. This is a connected vehicle. So if I may just turn this on, here, um, there are no keys on this vehicle. The entire vehicle gets turned on with a pin code, just like your phone. This vehicle is built on an aluminum frame. The entire vehicle is on is aluminum. There's not there's not plastic hiding any of the metal that you typically see in a vehicle. The battery is underneath the seat. It's a it's a removable battery. It comes out like a briefcase. You carry it wherever you go into your office. You charge it at your home and you plug it into any standard 110 or 220 outlet, whatever whichever country you're in. I, I, I love that. I love that because one of the things about electric vehicles is that you have cords stretching from a window outside of a second story down to the vehicle. This way, you just pull the battery out and wherever you can get a charge, wherever you can get a 110 volt outlet, you can charge up this battery, they told me, in about in about three hours or so. Yes, absolutely. And so you don't even have to park the vehicle next to the charging station, right? Your cars, you need to park it and you gotta wait. So this way, you can, you can power charge it overnight in your at your home in your office you can get juice at Starbucks wherever you want to get a cup of coffee so it's a perfect vehicle for, for this day and age it's also connected everybody with gets a vehicle gets the Gen Z app and you can see that this app right here has the vehicle information on it you can sit on your couch you can know where your vehicle is. You can run a diagnostic on this vehicle, which means if anything is wrong on this vehicle, you know sitting on the couch. If somebody were to cut a wire on this vehicle, you get a distress signal on your phone. Okay, so, so when you are coming to CES, you're looking for technology, but that's fun, but it's also practical and safe. The Gen Z 2.0 does that for you today. It's the world's first connected electric, all 100% electric transportation. It's a new world, and a new world needs new kinds of vehicles, which is why we're taking a look at the Irby. I'm speaking with Evan, who's going to tell you why this is your next electronic vehicle. Evan, okay, I, I got to say, the first glance is 
what in the world have you created? What is the Irby? We've created really the most functional, high quality, urban electric scooter device out on the market, period. And it really folds up nicely, easily. It's lightweight, it's portable, 35 pounds, built out of high quality um, carbon fiber and airplane grade aluminum. So it's not only lightweight, it's extremely durable and high quality. So we built a product to last for a really long time and be a really perfect solution for that person that needs to get either a mile or two miles to that bus or train or a mile or two miles from the train or bus to work. We really built this as a practical device to solve well, a problem that a lot of consumers are facing nowadays. So we're Irby, Urban Electric. It folds out, again, really easy. You can throw it in your trunk of your car. It's got a lot of applications. You can put your cell phone right here. You can put your, your coffee right here. It lasts for 20 miles on a single charge and goes up to 15 miles an hour. But my favorite aspect of it is that it's super comfortable. So you sit on it and you can really feel how well designed it is. I have to say, we, we had our production assistant zooming around on one of these, so we know there's a lot of acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can think of, like, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, yeah. and there's a lot of people who park on the other side of the bay, and they bar it to work, and then they walk to work. This would be the perfect device to store in your, in your trunk, bring onto the BART, and then ride the rest of the way to work. Uh, What's That's the, exactly the pricing and availability of the Irby? Yeah, right. So it's in full production right now, made in America. We built these by hand in Pasadena, California. It's $1,500, but we have financing place with Wells Fargo for as low as $1.75 a day. So not only is it super high quality, it's really available to everyone. You've seen an electric bike. You've seen an electric scooter. Now you need to see a three-wheel electric motorcycle. I'm here with Mark, the CEO of Arkimoto, who's going to explain what his company is and why they've created this. Now, Mark, for those people who don't know about your company, give us a little history. Okay, so I, I founded Arkimoto in 2007 with the goal of, of actually helping catalyze a shift to a sustainable transportation system. The, the base model price of the SRK, which is what, what we're uh, actually showing now, is $11,900, and that's for uh, freeway capable, 70 mile range, two passenger, plenty of room for stuff, sort of ticking all the boxes that you need for your daily drive, whether you're going to work, going to school, going to the movies, with a platform that is a quarter of the weight of an average passenger car uh, that just sips juice instead of guzzling it, whether it's gas or electricity. Short enough, you can park it nose into the curb, which means you can park three of them in one parking spot, uh, which is great for you know, if you're living in San Francisco and you know those little tiny parking spots between the driveways, or if you're in sort of any major metro area, parking's a huge challenge. Um, super fun to drive, very low center of gravity. What would you say right. is the perfect person to buy an SRK? Well, it, it's funny because you know you think about products typically, it's like, well, we're aiming at this particular demographic or this particular geography. The reality is that actually the driving patterns of Americans are pretty consistent across the country. Average American drives 33 miles a day, almost always alone, sometimes with another passenger. It's, it's a pattern that crosses urban rural divide. And really, you know, sure the parking benefit might not be important to you if you have tons of parking in a, a relatively small city, uh, but the fun factor is gonna be fun no matter where you live. Mark, thank you very much for, for speaking with us. Now, if they want to find out more about the SRK, they want to find out more about Arkimoto, where can they go? Arkimoto.com. So we're, what we're doing right now is we're taking pre-order deposits, 100 bucks, fully refundable. All that does is just save you a place in line for when we go into production. We're targeting end of this year. Could slip into early next year, but uh, coming soon. Thanks for speaking with us. This is the Arkimoto SRK. Maybe it's your next set of wheels. Uh, of course, there were some mainstream announcements. We had, mm -hmm. um, was it uh, uh, the uh, Futures, the uh, Faraday Futures? Faraday, yeah. They did their concept car, which looked cool, but you know, obviously that's not going to see the light of day. It, yeah. We've I had mean, a few of those. The idea, it looked cool, the idea of using the, your cell phone to power the whole system yeah. of the cars. You know, yeah, kind of okay. cool. Kinda, it, I mean, the one thing that was different about them is they do have a lot of backing. 
Mm -hmm. and they don't have a lot of baggage. So a lot of these other manufacturers, they're invested in a certain type of car, a certain type of vehicle. Sure. Whenever you have a new company like Faraday Futures, it's sort of like, well, they've got a clean slate. They can design anything they want. So I, I'm, I'm interested to see what they might come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you've had you know the standards. Uh, Audi was there, Ford was there, GM was there, mm -hmm. uh, VW was there. They were kind of in stealth mode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know for, why. Uh, a little bit of an embarrassing <laughs> news from last year, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they actually the, the the on the old map, which I was printed a long time ago. There actually is like a VW space, but uh -huh. then it was they used the name of the partner to show <laughs> off a VW car rather mm. than having it. Yeah, it was okay. Spent, nice try, VW. Yeah, we yeah. know what you did. Exactly, exactly. But overall, uh, you know, you're really starting to see EVs become viable products. It's yeah. no longer, well, buy this because it saves the planet. And now it's become, you know what? This might actually be a car for you. Right. Yeah, how long? How much do you commute? Do you commute less than 30, 30 miles a day? Okay, th that, this will be cheaper. Do you do freeway speeds or are you city? Because that will decide which vehicles you want. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you need, do you have the, uh, access to charging ports or do you need something that's going to have a, a battery that you can take into wherever it is that yeah. you are? Do you have infrastructure where you are? Uh, and the, the more that we can get options on the table like that, the more EVs become mainstream. Yes, and I feel like they're, they, they are definitely limited to the technology that we have right now. Like we're basically in the same era of when they said computers are portable now, and like in the <laughs> '80s, and you had to like, see, I carried my computer here, or you know. You do get a sense that we are seeing some very early days stuff. Yes, that which, it, it's close to what we'll have. I mean, the the, the shape is there, mm -hmm. the functions are there. It's just I, you kind of want to. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy who bought the Zoom. It, or two zooms, or two zooms. In, some, in some cases. Chocolate. 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 <laughs> but yeah, these are definitely filling kind of niche, um, niche problems that people might have in more of a like urban kind of environment. Like right. you right. live near to the city. Um, these definitely won't be replacing like rural town no. stuff. And like you've got Bleak in the chat room saying five dollars of gas would last him forever on his 50 cc uh, little scooter. In Tokyo. Uh, you've got uh, a Y guy who's saying, well, how would this do in the cold? Mm -hmm. And those are very good questions because, yeah, battery technology doesn't do really well when it gets cold. And do you really want to be riding an EV on icy streets? Probably, <laughs> probably not. So at, at, at the moment, we're still, we're still at the point that unless you're buying a ridiculously expensive model, mm -hmm. you know, something like the old Fisker or a Tesla right. or uh, like a Volt, a Chevy Volt, you're not driving an all situation car. You've right. got a, a niche vehicle. Right. And yeah. it, it's getting better. And uh, I think we're going in the right direction. I'm excited for it. Uh, let's talk a bit more about the right direction after we come back from this. But first, I do want to thank the second sponsor of this episode of Know How. And it's Drobo. Yeah, speaking of going in the right direction. Exactly. Now, Drobo, what, what I loved about them is that they've taken a different approach to storage. There's a lot of companies out there who say, well, we have to have a storage product. We have to have the USB enclosure. We have to have the, the network attached storage box. We have to have as many drives as possible. And then that's the thing. They right. just want to throw out the specs. They want to throw, oh, we've got big, big, big. We've got super huge base. But what about just using it? Using it, the mm -hmm. experience. And that's what Drobo understands. Drobo understands that it's not about the specs. It's not about getting uh, the biggest box possible. It's about having a line of products that lets you choose exactly what you need for a specific mission. In other words, they give you a toolbox and you get to choose the right tool. Now, now Drobo gets this. They've been with the Twit TV network for a long, long time, and we're excited to have them on Know How for 2016. They're a sponsor of this episode, and more than that, they're uh, providers of technology that we actually use in the Brick House. Now, they understand that digital data is essential to our lives, and Drobo is the safe, simple, and expandable solution for all your storage needs. They offer a family of external storage arrays that Leo Laporte uses when he shuttles his information back and forth between the studio and his home. Now, the, the Drobo 5N is perfect for network attached storage as a media server, a file server, or a backup solution. It's easy to use. You just plug it into your switch or router and you're ready to go. And they have apps that let you backup data to two different cloud service providers or sync via BitTorrent Sync. So if you wanted to do that 321, they've actually got an app that will do it for you. It will do the, your off-site storage. Uh, both, uh, they also have the Drobo Mini and the Drobo 5D. Now, these will work with Plex to work on the new Apple TV, but the Mini and the 5D are lightweight and portable. Just over two pounds, four drive bays for up to eight terabytes. The 5D is a desktop unit with space for five three and a half inch drives, 
and a maximum capacity of 64 terabytes. Both have a feature that I really like, and that is an optional MSATA SSD acceleration bay. In other words, you put an SSD in there, and suddenly you get SSD speeds. Uh, speeds. It's a cache, and if it guesses right, <laughs> you're, not, you're not transferring at hard drive speeds, you're transferring at SSD speeds. Now that will give you wonderful performance with things like Adobe Lightroom or Apple Photos, as well as its predecessors, Aperture and iPhoto. Oh, we've used here Drobo, Drobo Arrays. We have them downstairs in the, in the server room. We have them in Leo's office because we understand that sometimes you just need a lot of storage hooked up to your, to your local device, your local computer, so that you can edit or so you can transfer. And Drobo has always been the choice for Twit. They're reliable. Data received by your Drobo and not yet written to disk is protected. They have an internal eUSB device where data is copied to before it's written to the drive. That means that if you have a power failure, which is a worst case scenario for an external array, you're not going to lose that into the ether. It's actually on that eUSB. It's also expandable. With their Beyond Rate technology, you can expand on the fly. And get this, you can mix and match drives. No more having to buy an entire set from a single manufacturer and a single model. You just add space as you need it. It's also simple that those colored lights on the front of the Drobo will communicate their status, and it's fast. With support for gigabit Ethernet, Thunderbolt, and USB 3.0, pick the speed and the interface that you use, and Drobo will support you. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to try Drobo to see if maybe it's the storage solution for your toolbox. Visit drobo.com slash twit to learn more and to check out their complete line of products. And when you use the code TWIT100, You'll save $100 off the purchase of a Drobo Mini, Drobo 4Bay, or Drobo 5N. That's drobo.com slash twit, drobo.com slash twit, and use the code TWIT100. And we thank Drobo for their support of know-how. Drobo. <laughs> so what now, Padre? Well, I, I, I did want to talk about one thing that um, it, it kind of escaped a lot of the news. It wasn't, uh, you know, an earth-shattering announcement, but mm -hmm. I thought it was an important part of CES, and it is an EV. Specifically, it's the new GM Bolt. The Volt? Not I've the heard Chevy of the, I've Volt. Heard of the Volt. Oh no, not oh. the. No, it's totally different. The Bolt. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, now the Volt was a serial hybrid. You could put a gas motor in the back and it would recharge the, the, uh, the batteries. Mm -hmm. The Bolt is designed entirely as an electric vehicle. There okay. is no gas engine whatsoever. You, you charge it off the mains or you charge it off of something else, but it does not have an internal in, uh, combustion engine. Huh, okay, so what are the specs then? Well, okay, so it's a five door. So already, okay, good. This, is, this means it's, it's more useful than some of the other artisanal EV vehicles that we've seen. <laughs> I do like that name for them, artisanal. It, it does have a yeah. unique design. I, I kind of like this. It's not as geeky looking as a Prius, so it, it, but you can tell it's not a regular car. Right. Um, which, yeah, there it uh, is. Go ahead and scroll through these, uh, uh, Alex. It's got a lot of glass. It makes that cabin look really, really big. Uh, and it's also got a lot of safety tech. It's got blind spot warning. It's got hmm. parallel parking assistance, automatic lane keeping, Rear view cameras, which unfortunately right now uh, we're having a little discussion on whether or not that's actually legal in the United States. Uh, it's got a 10.2 inch command screen, LTE connectivity. Uh, I, I actually do really like the way it looks. Now it will even navigate you to a charging station when it knows you can't make it to your destination. Huh. That's, that's one of those, uh, those things. It takes away that, that range fear. Yeah. That somehow you might be going to a destination and just die in the middle. This vehicle will actually tell you, hey, you know what? You're Probably. not going to make it to your destination and you need to go this way to get to a charging station. Hmm, I kind of wish I had something like that on my phone, where it's like, if you're not <laughs> back home by, you know, nine o'clock, my battery will be dead. Right, right. Uh, it's even got smart keys. So the keys, like on some higher end cars, they, they will change not just like seat settings, but also all the settings for the electronics. Hmm. Uh, what GM figured out is that the people who like electric vehicles, this is gonna be a shocker, tend to like electronics. <laughs> That's crazy, <laughs> huh. I know, crazy, crazy thinking, but that's why they've really equipped this as not just a vehicle. It's no longer a car that's driven by uh, an EV drivetrain. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a connected playground that just happens to be a car. I think that's probably the best way to, for me to describe it. Okay, but yeah. uh, what are, what's like the range on it? A and this is where I think it, it's actually, this becomes the, the EV for the rest of us. We're talking about a 200 mile range on a single charge. That's versus something like the, the Nissan Leaf which they claim 70 miles range, which yeah. realistically 
it's closer to 60, maybe 55 mile range, okay. depending on how you drive it. This is a full 200 mile range on a single charge. And here's, here's the thing, mm -hmm. $30,000, now once you take away like the $7,500 in tax credit. So it's, okay. it's not crazy expensive. This is about the same price that you would pay for a Prius, which means if you drive less than 100 miles to work every day, mm -hmm. This is the ideal commute car. And I can't think of many people who drive more than 100 miles a day to work. That's pretty good. I, that's, uh, cause what's the Tesla? Can a t Tesla do like 250 yeah, or Tesla, something Yeah, like Tesla, but that? I mean. Uh, but it's, yeah, but for, for the price expensive. of what you're paying for yeah, the bolts. $30,000, I'm thinking it's probably got a 50 to 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, mm -hmm. which means, cause they were kind of mum on the, on some of the details. On the nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah. It, it means it could probably recharge in under three hours. Okay. Um, uh, you know, we have a parking garage here that supports that. Yeah. Uh, and considering the fact that right now, the car that I'm driving, I get charged $20,000 a year to drive. Right, so like, this oh, would be perfect for you. It actually saved me money. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, this, because your commute from the city to here is about, what, 45 miles? Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, almost exactly 45 so miles. So you're way below the, the limit of range, and right. you can plug in when you get here. Exactly. That's cool. I, and so, I, again, you remember how we were saying before that when you start getting vehicles that don't make you sacrifice something just so you could say you're saving the planet, but, <laughs> but give you a vehicle that you say, oh, that's a cool car. Right. For me, I, I actually like the styling of the Prius, but it's that's getting a little old. It's getting a little <laughs> long in the tooth. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that before. I do like the Prius. I actually do. But <laughs> I really liked the Bolt. Uh, the Bolt looks cool. It reminds me a lot of the BMW i3, um, yeah. their electric yep. vehicle that they have, but I'm not that's actually... way more expensive. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why I'm that's really like impressed. like a dollars car. Yeah. So for the range and price, it doesn't seem like a too shabby of a deal. What color would you get? Would you get that orange I would get that. Uh, go back to that orange one, Alex. <laughs> I, yes. I, I would get something gaudy that people did not like. Yeah. Right. I was, whatever. Like, what, sunset. Burnt Sunset. I think that's what that's called. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I really like that glass, that like overhead glass look. It kind of looks like a little dome car. Yeah. yeah it does, right? Yeah, it's totally glass on top. And I could hmm. probably fit 15 Filipinos in there. And then we could like have the little <laughs> clown car thing going on. Well, I imagine <laughs> having that much glass will be really great for you because you'll just have LEDs you know, yeah. shooting out of every every direction. Yeah, a little dance party going on in there. That's neat. Yeah. Well, folks, I'm sorry. There will be no more dance parties here. Uh, mm -hmm. That's it for this special episode of Know How. Uh, we're going to be doing stuff like this on Monday. We get the chance to break out of our regular rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Know How is normally about DIY and Maker. Today was really all about bringing you some of the cool technology that we've seen. We're gonna be bringing you more reviews. I, I wanna do a couple of science episodes where we just do some of the science that's really enamored us over the last couple of weeks. There's been some pretty good science stories coming out recently. Exactly, and we get to do that on Monday. Yes, all yeah. right, cool. Uh, until then, uh, we will give you all the links. So all the products that we, we displayed, we're gonna make sure that you have links to if you wanna check them out on your own. And where do they find those, Brian? You can go to twit.tv slash kh, find all the show notes, links to the websites that we have, and uh, download previous episodes. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget that you can also find us on Google+. Plus. Just go to Google+, Plus and look for the Know How Group. It is a, a, a registration thing. You have to send me a request, and I'll invite you into the group. Don't worry, I'll invite everybody. But once you're in, it's a great place to post pictures, videos of your projects, to ask questions, and to answer questions for people who are working on things that maybe you know a little bit about. Join the group. It's it's a great place to, to spend a couple of hours and just chill out with geeks. Yeah, if you're gonna thumb through the projects and things that people have done on there, definitely make sure you have like an hour yeah. or more to kind of, because it's a rabbit hole. It really is. I've gone down some crazy, crazy <laughs> projects that people have done. Yes, it is. Uh, also, don't forget you can find us on the tweeters. That's right. So if you want a behind the scenes kind of look at what we're doing when we're not on Know How, uh, you can follow me at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you can follow me at Padre SJ. And you can find our, our director. Director. Uh, Alex. 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 Alex at A-N-E-L-F-3. He's the one that makes sure the show stays Excuse on me, time. Excuse me, Brian. Oh. That's Alex. Alex. We're going to get this right. And we're at 47 right. minutes. Oh, OK. Now we've been told that we have to stop. <laughs> Folks, until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballasare. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go EV it.